Hey guys, this is Crispy. And this is Bread. And today we're going to take a look at Fallout 1. The original Fallout game inspired by, I believe, Wasteland. It takes place 84 years after the bombs fell. You're a vault dweller from Vault 13. You are initially sent out to recover a water chip because the water purification system for your vault has failed and if you don't retrieve it and return within 150 days the vault will die and then later after that it is to discover and assess the super mutant threat in the area this game is one of my favorite all-time rpgs i enjoy basically everything fallout related i'm not a fan of fallout 4 um, the story just didn't do it for me, but the fir initially the first two Fallouts, Fallout 1, Fallout 2, and even Fallout Tactics, I like the story in them, and I like how even in the later games, though I don't like a lot of the stuff in the later games, they do incorporate a lot of the lore. There's a lot of continuity that's not changed. I'm going to take a look at this game with you. We'll go through the character generation first, and I'll show you some of the gameplay of it, and then we'll see if it's something you guys want to see more of. Me... So there are pre-gen characters you can take. I don't ever take any of them. Basically, a bruiser, a charismatic thiefy kind of character, and a face man. But I'm going to create my own. So I'm just going to give you a... Well, kind of an in-detail rundown of the different stats and abilities. It's basically... It runs on a d10 system essentially if you've ever played uh, it's more like a d20 system really but it's it's done in percentages so you have five points to assign initially to your stats they all start at five strength impacts your hit points melee damage and carry weight some weapons also have a strength requirement to use properly perception is exactly what perception is your ability to hear taste and notice unusual things it is necessary for someone who's going to use anything ranged um, it also affects sequence which is your initiative how quickly you go in combat and like i said before it modifies ranged combat distance endurance that's constitution it the, the main, that's the main stat that affects hit points. It also modifies poison, radiation resistance, healing rate, and hit points per level. So healing rate is another interesting thing in this game. So basically every six hours that you rest, you'll get hit points back. It would be one at this current rate. Charisma influences the NPC reactions towards you and barter prices. Intelligence is the number of skill points you have, and it opens certain dialogue options. Agility affects action points, your armor class, your sequence, and many skills. So this is an action point system. So like if, before I add any points, I have seven action points. So, you know, attacking with a gun takes five. Making an, a targeted shot at a limb takes six. Opening your inventory takes four. If move four. Moving one hex takes one. Um, things like that. And luck. Luck really affects everything. It has a major effect on your random encounters. And it affects your critical hit chance. So what I do, and what Crispy hates about me that I, endurance is my dump stat i am a squishy long range character when i play this game i'm also going to take finesse and gifted so i'll go over all of the traits fast metabolism it increases the rate at which you heal but it makes you less resistance to radi less resistant to radiation and poison bruiser is the opposite of finesse your melee attacks do more damage but you crit less small frame Reduces your carry weight and gives you one agility. This makes you one-hander, makes you more effective using single-handed weapons, pistols, um, th weapons like a crowbar. Finesse makes you crit more but do less damage. Kamikaze makes your armor, your base armor class zero, but it adds to your sequence. So you're going to go a lot more in combat, but you're going to get hit more. Mm. 
Sorry, I said bruiser was wrong. Your total action points are lowered, but your strength is increased. Heavy-handed is the opposite of finesse. You do more damage, but you crit less. Fast shot makes it so that you cannot do a targeted attack, but it costs one less action point to use weapons. Bloody mess. So essentially in this game, if you overkill a creature by a certain amount, it the death animation is more violent. The bloody mess makes it so that death animation is always there. Jenkst increases your chance of a critical failure, but it increases the chance of critical failures for everyone around you, enemies included. Good natured lowers all of your combat skills, but increases um, first aid, doctor, speech, and barter. Chem reliant, your chance to crave chemical, crave drugs is twice normal, but you recover faster from their negative effects. Chem resistant. They only affect you for half as long, but you're only at a 50% chance to become addicted. Night person. Your intelligence and perception are improved at night, but dull during the day. Skilled. Gives you additional skills, but you only gain a perk every four levels. If you've played the console games like Fallout 3 and New Vegas, I believe in Fallout 3 you get a perk every two levels. In New Vegas it might be every level or every other level. Um, in this game you normally get them every three if you take skill every four. Gifted gives you one point in every stat, lowers all of your skills by 10%, and you receive five fewer um, damn it, five fewer skill points per level. So what I'm going to do is lower my charisma to four, take that to seven, that seven, agility to ten, luck to ten, and I think small guns is based off of agility. We will pump intelligence again. So that leaves me with a very good strength, a very good perception, bad endurance, fair charisma, very good intelligence, and heroic agility and luck. So that maxes out my action points and my base armor class and that maxes out my base critical hit chance at first level to be 20%. I crit 1 in 4, 1 in 5, my math is bad. That would be in a d20 game, 17, 18, 19, and 20 crit. Now, the skills, the base for your skills is based off of a percentage plus a stat. So like small guns, it's 35% plus your agility. So, and then minus the 10% from my gifted, but it would be 45 otherwise. This, you tag skills, which are your preferred skills. It increases them. It makes it easier to increase them as you level up. I am going to take small guns, lockpick, and speech. I'm going to be a suave, sniper, rogue type character. We will be Lucian. I will be damn it, 23, which is how old I really am. Male and we will watch the cutscene. The cutscene is a little blurry. I haven't been able to fix the resolution for it. The game is in as pretty good a resolution as it's going to get. Ha! Ah, you're here. Good. We've got a problem. A big one. The controller chip for our water purification system has given up the ghost. Can't make another one. The process is too complicated for a workaround system. Simply put, we're running out of drinking water. No water, no vault. This is crucial to our survival. And frankly, I, I think you're the only hope we have. You need to go find us another controller chip. We estimate we have four to five months before the vault runs out of water. We need that ship. We marked your map with the location of another vault. Not a bad place to start, I think. Look, just be safe, okay?
All right, and we've set out. So, I think you can actually get the manual off of Steam, or I'm sure you can Google and find it. But you, it's a hex game where you move in hexes. If you, when you click on a hex, you'll move there. If you double click, you'll run there. If you right click, it brings up the arrow, the arrow for interaction. You can shift your facing. You can, by default, it's set to loot or interact with things. If you click and hold and then move down, you can examine, open your inventory to use an item on it, use a skill, or cancel. We're going to go ahead and loot this corpse. He died right outside the vault. 24 rounds and a knife. So you, your starting loadout is based off of your skills. Um, start with a 10 millimeter pistol 72 hollow point rounds 24 um, armor piercing rounds yeah armor piercing rounds I started out with a set of lock picks two flares four stem packs um, so if you notice there is a bubble of light around me I'm in a cave so it's dark beyond this bubble of light your modifiers for hitting with ranged weapons are severely reduced inside the light I believe it's normal that's where you can use flares if I check a flare out here then if they're in that light it doesn't affect me I'm gonna also give you a quick rundown of the skills because I didn't go over them small guns are conventional firearms pistols submachine guns and rifles big guns are your mini gun rocket launcher flamethrower energy weapons are your laser and plasma weapons unarmed is hand-to-hand -hand as well as power fist Melee weapons are going to be like crowbar, knife, spear. Throwing is going to be spears, grenades, and throwing knives if you throw the spear. First aid heals hit points. Doctor heals, you know, broken limbs, damage to the eyes. Sneak is pretty self-explanatory. Lockpick is pretty self-explanatory. Also, if you find electronic lockpicks, it is... It runs off of this skill, not science, even though it's electronic. Steel, while it is pickpocketing, like in the picture, it also affects... Like, let's say I go into a store, and he's got a display, and I steal from the display. It comes off of the steel skill. Traps is the finding and removal of traps. Also, the use of explosives for demolition purposes. Now, that is useful in some limited situations. So, let's say I set some TNT to blow something up and I tell it to blow up th in 30 seconds because you actually set a timer. It rolls against the skill. If it rolls poorly, it can set off late or prematurely. Like prematurely as in I set it for 30 seconds and it blows up in two. That can happen. Science is a lump sum knowledge of all of your science skill, computers, biology, physics, geology. It's used mostly for interaction with computer consoles as well as some chat options. Repair is the practical application of the science skill, mostly to fix machinery and electronics. Speech is a combination of both your deception skills and your persuasion. Barter is simply for trading. Gambling is your skill at cards, dice, and other games. Outdoorsman, when you roll, when you're on the overland map and you have a random encounter, it affects your placement in the encounter as well as some random encounters will be like, oh, you need to find water and it'll roll against that skill. And then if you fail, you'll take some damage. I suck at that skill, as you can see. Um, let's go ahead and get out of the starting cave. So if you're wanting to initiate a combat, well, he initiated it for me, but if you click on the gun, you can, you can move and attack first. So I have a 95% chance to hit him. I can also right click and do a targeted shot, which lets me target the head, eyes, front legs, rear legs, groin, and body. And reload is also an option, but I haven't fired a round. And then you can swap out to another weapon set. So just to show you, I'm gonna do a targeted shot and shoot him in the head. I have a 62% chance to hit him. I hit him for six points and killed him. Reload. When you're ready to, if you want to end your turn, you hit space. If you want to end the combat, you hit enter. When you end your turn, any leftover action points become armor class. If there's nothing else aggroed on you, it will end the combat. I'm going to go ahead and take a pot shot at this rat. 39% and I hit him. 
and then hit enter and we will go ahead and get out of this cave I went into sneak so I could get closer without him initiating the combat. You cannot run and sneak at the same time unless you get a perk for it. Oh, he saw me. He's going to get to hit me. And he missed. It's a tough rat if I can shoot it with a 10mm pistol and not kill it on the first shot. Also, as you can see, sometimes the edges are a little out of your line of sight. If you go to like shoot, it will highlight them so that you can see them even if they are, you know, the wall is at it, makes it out of your view. And now we will go towards Vault 15. To the west, you can see a natural light. For the first time in your life, you are looking at the outside world. In any zone, if you see a red area that is leaving the area, a green is going deeper into it, a different instance of the area, like town square and market district. Red will always take you to the overland map. We are going to go Vault 15, but there is going to be a detour that I take before I go to Vault 15, because I'm going to act on some meta knowledge that I have. So if you, while you're moving there automatically, anywhere you click, you'll go there instead. I don't know why this cursor on this map is all flickery. At least it is in mine. So, welcome to Shady Sand, stranger. Please holster that weapon while you're here. You just change to a weapon set that doesn't have, you know, the, where you're unarmed and you're good. The first thing you should do, especially if you're new at this game, is talk to Katrina. She is going to tell you how to trade, how to use stem packs, tell you some information about skills she's actually from vault 15 tells you that it was attacked she was injured and then fled here to and decided to stay here to help shady sands i'm actually going to skip through this dialogue because it'll take a minute but that is pretty much all the information she gives you you get 250 experience for going through that chat option good day i am called seth how can i help you i'd like some information information what do you want to know about I want to know about this place. Shady Sands is a peaceful community. We have our own irrigation system so we can grow our own food. If we were not plagued with raiders and rad scorpions, we would have no problem. Tell me about the scorpions. The damned rad scorpions have been after our brahmin since we moved here. Not a week goes by that someone doesn't get poisoned trying to keep them out of the pens. Last week they took my brother Jarvis. Razlo, our doctor, is looking for an antidote as quickly as he can. Hey, if you have the means to help us, why don't you talk to our leader, Eridesh? Um, I want to know about the raiders. There are several groups of raiders. I organize guards like Ian to help fight them off. There is one band to the southeast of here. Watch out for them. Alright, another interesting thing about you can barter and do the tell me about with any NPC. So let's say I'm talking to him and I go, I type in red scorpions. He'll give me what he knows about them. Nasty creatures with a deadly venom. Now, if I ask him about something he doesn't know anything about, like Vault 15, uh, he'll tell me he don't know anything about that. And that way, even though if you don't have a chat option for it, you can be like, well, do you know about this? It gives you a very free flow way of doing things, which for a game this old, I've never seen another game that I know of do that. Welcome, stranger. We don't see your kind often. Uh, why not? Look, Shady Sands don't need your kind come from the hub or junk town or wherever you come from. We do pretty good by ourselves. The last trader from the hub sold us a malfunctioning irrigation pump. We've had it with your dirty deals. You got it all wrong. I'm not like that. Yeah, right. So you say. Just don't get in any trouble, okay? Yeah, whatever. And I believe he is a guard. If you mouse over them, it'll give you a little bit. So you, you see one of Shady Sand's guards. I can examine him if I want. He is unhurt. Sometimes it'll expand on information that's already been given to you. Sneak. If I fail this, I'm going to get shot at. Okay. Let's go talk to Ian. Hello, stranger. You look like you're new here. What's your name? I'm Lucian. Good to meet you. I'm Ian. 
I'd like to know more about this place. Can you help? Shady Sands is a small but self-sufficient community. The only trouble here is with the bandits and the red scorpions. Why are the scorpions trouble? They're very dangerous. They have a poisonous stinger in their tail and they can be very quick. Eridesh has been trying to find a way to get rid of them. Find a way to get rid of them. If you feel brave, you could talk to Eridesh about them. Alright, I have more I want to ask you. Tell me about Seth. Seth's a very brave fighter. He occasionally goes to the Red Scorpion Caves to kill a few scorpions, but they always wind up coming back. There are just too many for us to fight. Okay. Damn it. And you give me directions to the hub and junk town. The hub is a big trading center far to the south of Shady Sands. It's run by several different caravan groups of merchants. The water merchants, the crimson caravan, and the Fargo traders. Junk town is a little south and a ways west. It's smaller, but still a good place to drop in for a drink. It's overseen by a fellow by the name of Killian Darkwater, the local shopkeep, sheriff, and mayor. Could you help me out a bit? Your experience would be useful. Another thing about this game that I like, so, you know, like in Fallout 3, it'll tell you automatically whether or not you're going to fail a speech. In here, in this game, I believe it rolls against the skill. It's not just a flat-out success or fail, but it doesn't tell you when that's coming up. This is a speech challenge because he wants 100 caps for me to be able to take him as a follower. If you succeed at this... He says, sure, I'll take a piece of the loot instead of the caps. If you fail, he's like, nah, you got to pay me. See? All right, I'll help you in exchange out in exchange for my share of the loot. And the reason that I say it's a, a roll instead of a flat success is with this exact same character build, I have succeeded and failed before. You do not have control over your followers. They will act on their own. You can give them weapons. You can't armor them in this game. And they can accidentally shoot you, and you can't accidentally shoot them. This pillar is the showpiece of Shady Sands Square. It tells the stories to remind the people of hope and peace. I kind of steal everything. It's just kind of a fallout staple for me. If it's not nailed down and I can put my hands on it, I'm going to take it. This is the house for the doctor. I'm going to go ahead and save once. Whoops. I'm going to sneak. I'm going to steal. Boom. Take his doctor bag, a skill book, five stem packs, and a first aid kit. Alright guys, I think this is where we're going to cut it for today. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Dislike if you don't like what I'm doing. And please let me know if you'd like to see more of this. I would be more than happy to do a full playthrough of this, even a walkthrough for the type of playthrough that I do. This game is actually a game that you can beat without killing anything. You can talk your way through every interaction that happens in this game. I don't do that. I try to talk through some of them. But that is an option. You can also kill your way through every interaction in the game. But alright guys, you guys have a good rest of your day. Have fun guys.